Hello folks and welcome to the second PowerPoint lecture in our unit on genre analysis. Um, in this lecture I want to really quickly review the article by Irene Clark that you read in lesson one, oh, excuse me, it says lesson one here but that actually was um, here in lesson two. So review the Irene Clark article um, to talk about the second essay that is the culmination of our second unit, the genre analysis theme, and to start doing a practice activity analyzing mm -hmm. genres together. So the Irene Clark, um, I asked you to respond in blog number four um, by summarizing one of the main uh, theoretical ideas about genre that she uses in order to look at assignment writing prompts. Um, what I want to really quickly do is just clarify what the purpose and project of her article was. Um, essentially she was um, arguing for teachers to do two things. To uh, be more aware of the genre of assignment prompts themselves um, which often ask students have um, implied requirements in them. Uh, those are the uh, ex implicit um, conventions of the genre. So the teacher is familiar with the genre of assignment prompts, but students aren't familiar with the genre. So some of the implied expectations for a paper aren't often written out explicitly within the prompt because the teacher expects the student sometimes or isn't remembering that the student doesn't have doesn't have those expectations internalized the same way that teachers do. Um, so that's one of the main ideas. And the second is that she wants students to be more aware of the genres of the essays themselves that they're writing in response to those prompts. Um, and to, if we think, are basically with the view that if we are more aware of the fact that we're assigning a certain kind of genre when we assign a writing activity or, or essay or assignment, that um, that will help the teacher to make more explicit the requirements that that essay has for students. Um, and she uses some ideas about genre in order to get that across. Um, she talks about how genres are kind of a performative thing that ask us to play roles, and she has that example of um, students being asked to play the role of the novice researcher, not of not sounding like they're a student in a class, but sounding like that they're you know someone independent out in the world who has an interest in this topic and it just happens to be writing about it. Um, and because sometimes um, students don't understand those kinds of implicit requirements of the assignment prompt genre, in that way, this is genre helps to construct inside or outsider boundaries, something that we see genres do in general. Um, and genres, again, have implicit expectations and appropriate responses. So the genre analysis assignment um, is in the syllabus, pages five to six, um, and I'll let you turn to that yourselves to read through it. Um, please do let me know if you have questions about what the assignment's asking you to do. Um, basically, I'm asking for a really short analysis essay. Um, it's called a theme because um, I'm not asking for much length. So because I'm not asking for much length, that kind of requires you to be a lot more efficient about what you say. Um, you know, a really brief introduction, um, perhaps even just a quick statement of purpose before getting right into what you're saying. Um, so I want you to think about how you can be um, efficient and quick about getting into it. And really use this as kind of um, a well thought through thinking exercise. So a chance to kind of work through some of the ideas about the genre you're looking at um, and to look at those, those fine details and to kind of just concentrate on that kind of uh, part of it, that kind of cognitive activity. Um, I have here too to please ignore the word rationale used at the end of the assignment description. Um, if you look at the underlying words format and requirements that are listed at the very end of the description for this assignment, um, you'll see that I use the word rationale there. I meant to say theme or essay. Um, that's a holdover from a previous iteration when I had students um, do a different kind of project for this unit. Um, what I recommend for getting started with this assignment, after reading the assignment prompt carefully, of course, is to start by gathering artifacts. So consider genres that are in use in, um, you know, a community um, that you use in some, in some of your literacies. Um, so in those ways, you could perhaps think about a text that you're used to seeing in your everyday life. Um, and one, you know, if you're having trouble thinking of an idea, one really great way to do this is to look at the genres you're asked to write in your very own classes. Um, look at, take an essay that you wrote for a class. Um, you could even take the literacy analysis essay if you wanted from this class. 
um, or one that you're writing for another class right now, or that you just wrote last semester, um, and take a look at it. What is it that you did, and how was that responding to the situation, the genre set up? Um, you can also take some other kind of artifact, and this could kind of connect to the final project. Now, for the final project, it's not necessarily a requirement that you look at a group in whole. Um, so, for instance, if it was me, I wouldn't necessarily have to look at um, the Lululemon Run group. I wouldn't necessarily have to do an analysis of that group. I could do an analysis of one runner within that group and kind of, you know, talk to them and look at look at what they do and the text they use. Um, I say this in order to tell you that, um, you know, you, you're kind of really free to look at whatever kind of person or group you want to for the final project as long as you're conducting primary research. So if you have a person in mind right now, and it could be yourself perhaps, we could talk about that, um, but if you have a person or group in mind for the final project, this analysis, this genre analysis could be a great opportunity to start getting some work done that could um, play into that final project. Um, it's really fine for there to be a lot of crossover between this assignment and the next one, or between this assignment and the last one. I really encourage that um, to kind of try to make this some kind of extension or preparation for one of those two. Um, you'll see in the assignment description that it kind of asks you to look at, um, you know, patterns, um, notice things uh, about how the genre appears or sounds. Um, and that's supposed to get you thinking about what, what this makes visible, right? So we talked about how genre is more than just how it's formatted, right? It's not constituted by its, or defined by its format, but rather the format is the effect. So what is this format an effect of? What is, you know, if there's lots of line breaks in a poem, what is that an effect of? You know, why is that something that's there? How does that work? So if you're writing about poetry, it wouldn't just be about the line breaks, but it would be about what those line breaks do and why they're there and how they function. Okay, so this is really similar to rhetorical analysis, um, just that we're being more specific by thinking about this group of texts, right? A group of texts that are recurring in response to a typified situation that, um, you know, kind of get grouped together. So, what I would encourage you to do for the rest of this PowerPoint is to join me in a practice. Um, this, is a, this is an activity I usually do as a full day when I teach this class um, during this regular school year when we have like a good 50 minutes to work on it. Um, I kind of tried to adapt it for the online iteration of this class. Um, so what I would suggest um, is first to, um, you know, if you're kind of feeling unsure about the genre theory that we're talking about, to look back at the PowerPoint from lesson one. Um, I kind of talked through the example of a syllabus and how that is um, a genre. So you might want to kind of look back at that to kind of see if you better understand what it is we're talking about in this unit. Um, then secondly, I recommend you take another look back at that Purdue Al reading about the rhetorical situation. Because those five elements that they, they uh, define in a rhetorical situation, author, audience, purpose, time, place, those are all really useful uh, ways of thinking about genre. Um, there's also a handout right before this PowerPoint. Um, it says genre matrix. And that basically lays out um, a chart to help you think about four different broad kinds of issues. Rhetorical issues, the typical content, structure, and style language. For the purpose of this demonstration, I've used the matrix, but you can go ahead and kind of draw from both that and the rhetorical situation. Um, that might be a, a good way to look at things. So first, um, I'll explain this, and then I want you to try pausing this video lecture for a minute um, to try to think through this and just jot down some ideas on scrap paper. But um, if you think about you know, a cable news broadcast, so a CNN or Fox News um, broadcast on breaking news, what is it that comes to mind in terms of those matrix categories I just outlined, or in terms of the rhetorical situation? So who is the audience for you know, a breaking news broadcast on CNN? Um, what kind of typical content do we see? How is that usually kind of structured and organized? What kind of style and language do we see? Um, so I'm sorry, I see another typo on this, on this PowerPoint. So this is map out ideas about movie trailers. Um, I usually use two texts for this assignment. Here I've just used one. But go ahead and do this in terms of cable news broadcasts. Um, pause this video for a minute and take a look at that. And um, then when you're ready, go ahead and push play again. 
Okay, so I've asked you to chart out your own observations on genre. I hope you did it. If not, I really do suggest you do. Um, and then here I've made my own chart and mine is not by any means comprehensive. I'm sure many of you thought of ideas that I didn't, um, but this is just kind of a list to get you going. So I have some observations I've made in terms of style, structure, and content on this page. And um, on the next page, I have a couple ideas in terms of rhetorical considerations. So to finish up this activity, I suggest you look at the video I've linked um, it's the item right after the PowerPoint on the same page as this PowerPoint um, in Lesson 2, Unit 2. Um, it is a satire of a news broadcast produced by The Onion. And why I think that's useful is because a satire takes genre conventions and it uses them in order to make something that looks like the thing. So the Colbert Report takes the conventions of um, you know, the, um, a show like The Bill O'Reilly Show and it uses them in a different way to kind of copy it and, and make a copy. It's for a different purpose, but they're, they're basically taking the visible characteristics of that genre and doing something with it. So to wrap up this PowerPoint, again, we reviewed Irene Clark and the assignment description for the genre analysis. Um, and we practiced analyzing a genre together. So looking forward, do take a look at that Onion video I posted. Um, it's very, it, it's funny and it's, um, you know, it'll kind of show you why I kind of took a moment to go through that analysis of a genre um, and kind of so hopefully be rewarding in that way. Um, block number five is going to ask you to start jotting down notes about one or two genres you might write about. So basically this is an opportunity for you to start getting thinking about what you might write about for the project. So if you kind of feel sure about the text you want to look at, go ahead and just focus that blog post on that one text. But if you want a couple different possibilities um, or you're really not sure, take a look back at your discourse community map and find um, maybe two genres that you can start mapping out characteristics for. All right, so thank you very much for your attention.